State medical boards are using their authority as a tool to silence doctors who dare to question the established narratives on medicine or who stand against the pharmaceutical industry. This problem came to the forefront under COVID-19 when the medical establishment got information wrong on the virus and vaccines and also censored legitimate treatments. Yet doctors are now standing up. Richard Jaffe is helping lead a lawsuit against the California Medical Board, arguing that its actions to silence doctors is a violation of their constitutional rights. Hey, Rick Jaffe, thanks for being on Crossroads. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, you have an interesting case right now, arguing kind of kind of against what I think you say is rules against doctors you know, under the label of going against misinformation, but that's actually undermining the First Amendment rights of doctors. Can you just explain to us a bit of what the California Medical Board has been doing? Like, what is it that you're having issues with that they're doing? Okay. Well, let me start from the beginning, all right? Give the readers a complete picture of what happened. In July 2021, the Federation of State Medical Boards, which is the trade group for medical boards, issued a press release. It wasn't a white paper. It wasn't some thought out thing. They just issued a couple paragraph press release. And what they said is, look, doctors who knock the vaccine and promote off-label COVID drugs like ivermectin or HCQ uh, uh, should have their uh, licenses revoked or disciplined. So that's what they said. We're the Federation of state medical boards, our members are all the medical boards around the country, and we think that these medical boards should go after doctors who go out in public and spread what they call COVID misinformation. So they did that in July, and then what happened as a result of that, uh, some states, a few states anyway, like California, introduced legislation effectuating the Federation's policy. So in California, what they did is they introduced a bill that basically said if you spread what they call COVID misinformation, a doctor can be disciplined. The target of the bill were the doctors who were going around on the Internet and in public knocking the vaccine, the safety and efficacy of the vaccine, promoting these off-label drugs in public, and the effect of which the the the, the Basically, the people in support of uh, all these COVID edicts were taking the position that these doctors were drowning out the message of the public health authorities, and they were increasing what they call vaccine hesitancy. So this bill in California, uh, carrying out the Federation's policy, was trying to stop doctors from going out in public and saying things that would make it less likely that people would take the, you know, the COVID vaccine or the second, third, fourth, or semi-annual booster. So that was the target of the bill. And that was back in February. And then what happened is it became very clear very quickly to the legislatures that you can't stop doctors from speaking out in public. I mean, that's just everyone understands that to be unconstitutional. So what they tried to do to save the bill was they tried to limit the, uh, uh, the information to information provided in, to the perp- for the purposes of treatment or advice between a doctor and a patient in the hopes that that would basically avoid the constitutional argument or the constitutional, the obvious constitutional problem. Now, the board has already taken the position they don't even need this law. They can, they can sanction doctors for their public speech. They can sanction doctors for their private speech uh, to patients, even without this law. But they figure, well, what, let's make it clear that we can do it. So that's their position in any event. They always had their right to do it, which they, I don't think they did. But right now, the bill in California, the law in California, as of January 1st, is that doctors can be sanctioned for speaking out against uh, the mainstream COVID media, or that's how we interpret the bill. Hmm. Well, you know, I think this raises a few questions. Um, I want to dig into it, dig into these. Sure. One of the issues you said is that it raises that they try to get around the constitutional argument by saying that basically, if a doctor gives advice to a patient, that's okay. But I assume that means that if they, for example, post something on Twitter 
they consider that not okay? Can, can you explain this? Well, like, like I say, I mean, it. the point of the bill was from, to stop doctors from speaking out in public because it was – they, they said it, it stopped uh, herd immunity because you have to have all 95 percent of people to get vaccinated and boosted. And so it was really the public problem they were trying to address, but they had to give that up. So the way the law reads now is, well, the way the world is, law reads now is it's completely ineffective to do what the law was supposed to do, which was to stop uh these doctors from uh, drowning out the public health authorities. And, and the notion that you can do that uh, by targeting doctors in their, in, the, in, in, their, in their examination rooms by what they say to individual patients, I mean, that's just not a good fit. It's more like they had to gut the bill, but they kept on promoting the bill as targeting the public information that doctors said. So when you say, you know, when you, you had some confusion about whether well, does it still affect uh, public information, technically no, but that's what the legislature was really worried about and continued to be worried about even after the law was changed to knock out the whole public aspect. And that's part of the confusion is that, you, you know, there's just a disconnect between the problem, right, which is, you know, Simone Gold, Joe Mercola, and all, uh, 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 Sherry Tenpenny, all of these so-called anti-vax docs that were having a dramatic effect on the dialogue, which was negating or undercutting the, the you know, Anthony Fauci and, you know, uh, uh, Paul Offit and all these guys who were trying to get people or at least back then, we're trying to get people to take every vaccine and every booster. Interestingly, Paul Offit, who is Mr. Vaccine, is now getting very reluctant to recommend all these boosters for, for a lot of reasons. But, but that is the whole target of the bill, which, and this is really our point in, in court, is that that target is not being addressed in the bill because it's it is limited and had to be limited to patients because of constitutional considerations. So I guess our point is, what's the point, right? And under constitutional law, you know, a bill has to be a reasonable fit to the problem the bill seeks to address. Right. And there's a concept called under inclusiveness. And here's the crazy thing about it. This bill targets physicians, uh, medical doctors and osteopaths. There are plenty of other people who talk about vaccines, chiropractors, licensed and unlicensed naturopaths. And the bigger problem is what has happened in the pandemic. And I'm going to be I'm, this is going to be a big part of our case. What's happened in the pandemic is that the concept, uh, you don't need to go to a doctor to get a vaccine anymore. If you want a vaccine and you think it's, you know, the bee's knees, you go to your local uh, pharmacy, right? I mean, I mean, everyone's got a Walmart or a, a pharmacy or a Target, whatever. You go to a grocery store that has a pharmacy. So what's happened is if you want a vaccine, you go to a pharmacy or some other place, but if you really have concerns about, about whether you should take that 12th booster, you might want to go to a doctor and get some information. And the board's problem in this case, and why I think we have a pretty good chance, is that even in California, which is pretty restrictive, the courts have held that information about things, even which violates the so-called standard of care is still protected and, and or can't be reached. So from a legal point of view, it's very questionable whether the board has the power to discipline doctors, basically censor doctors from providing information that patients would like to hear about. And, and for, so that's, that's kind of where we are and why we are somewhat confident that even in California, we might get a favorable result.